A process which creates IDML import files is called a DLA, a Discovery Library Adapter. And the IDML file it creates is also called a Discovery Book. And the fastest way to make a DLA is using TDI. Now in preparation for this example, I've created a folder here called TDI DLA in my solution directory. That means I can refer to it using, it a, relative, using a relative path. In this folder, I've made another subdirectory called IDML. This is where my discovery books will be written. And I've set up my import or my test data file, which looks like this. It's a simple character separated value file using a comma here, as you can see. It contains the computer name, an attribute called machine or a field called machine, and the operating system, and an attribute called opsys. Now in TDI, the first step is then to read in the file. I'll then need to create the book, add the computer system, add the operating system, and then add a relationship between these that this operating system is installed on this computer system. So in TDI, my first step is to create my project, which I'm going to call, as the directory, TDI DLA. Then I'll make my assembly line, which I'll call create IDML. I'll need a file connector to read my test data file. By typing file here in the search field, it limits the number of components shown, so it's much easier for me to select the one that I want. And I'll call this read CSV, and then change the mode from add to iterator, which is to read through the file or cycle through the file. In the next wizard panel, I configure the component. In this case, the file system connector requires only one parameter set, and that will be the, the path to my file. If I use Alt-N, go to the next panel, I choose the, ca the character separated value parser, and then set the field separator from using a semicolon to using comma. This component, this iterator, shows up in the feed section, which is going to drive it in a loop once for every row read and parsed, and then push that information to the flow section where I'll use it to create my discovery book. Now I can connect to the file and start parsing it. This means that the connector will have this information in its cache, but I need to set up mapping rules to instruct it to bring these attributes into the assembly line so that way I can use them further down. Now I'll create my book this time I'll type IDML to limit the number of components here to only those used for working with IDML creation. And here's my open IDML function component, which I'm going to call create discovery book. The directory name is the directory where I'm going to be writing this file, and I can use a relative path to my IDML subfolder from my TDI DLA directory. Then I've got the application code and host name, which will be in the header of the discovery book, but are also used to generate the name of the file. And since I don't really have a system providing my import data, I'm going to just use TDI. And the host name will be TDI at acme.com. The CDM version parameter is the version of uh, the common data model that I'm going to be using to generate the file. And I'm going to use the latest version that the library and TDI supports. Now I also have to set the name of the MSS, the managed system, which will be delivering this data to me. And I do that in my output map, and I'm going to just connect to discover which attributes are available for mapping here. And then I can browse down to the MSS name and just drag that in. And because this is just an example, I'm going to set this to a literal value TDI. Now I'm ready to add the computer system. Once again, we add another component. I limit the list to IDML, 
and I choose the IDML CI and Relationship Connector. And this copy I'm going to call Add Computer System. In the Configuration panel, this is where I decide whether I'm adding CIs or I'm adding relationships. And in this case, a computer system is a CI. And then I can choose the class type. And I know that it starts with CDM sys, and then it's computer system. It's not that difficult. But I'm going to just show you. It's quite a quite a lot of classes available here. And it's often best to find it in a schema or in a dropdown and select it rather than type it in yourself. Because IDML verification is both spelling and case sensitive. The attributes I'm going to write out I can, can again discover here. And I'm going to use the fully qualified distinguished name and I'm going to write out the signature. That will fulfill the naming rules for a computer system CI. So the FQDN and down here near the bottom, I'm going to find the signature. Both of these I'm going to map to the attribute being read in by my read CSV connector called machine. This is the host name. And I'm going to use that for both of these values. So I double click on the assignment and we change this. When I type dot or I press control space, I get completion. And there I can see which attributes are available, are being read into the assembly line and available for mapping here. We just control A, control C to copy that, and I'll use the same thing here for signature. I also have to give every CI an ID. So I'm going to add a new attribute which must be called $ID. And I'm going to use the same mapping for that because that's going to be unique for every line that I'm reading. Every host name is going to be unique in this file. They might, several of them, be using the same operating system, but I know that the machine attribute will have a unique attribute or a unique value for every row that I'm reading. So that's my computer system. Now I'll add the operating system in a similar fashion. This time I'm going to just type in the value because I know what it needs to be. CDM colon colon sys operating system. Again, I go to the output map, discover the attributes that are available for an operating system, and I'm going to write out the OS name. This time in the assignment, I'll use the other attribute that read CSV is providing with me. I also have to add a unique ID for the operating system as well. And I know that machine will be unique for each row, so I'm going to go ahead and use machine to create this value. but I need to make it different than the ID of the computer system. So I'm going to just tag on underscore OS. Just tag on a string value to this, so that way it will be different from the computer system. All the IDs for CIs have to be unique and different in the IDML file. All right, now I'm ready to add the relationship, and I'm going to use the installed on relationship. Again, we add an IDML component, the same connector. I'll call this add installed on. This time I'm going to choose to add a relationship. And when I use the select button here, I get the list of relationship classes. The relationship doesn't have an ID of its own, but it is going to refer to the IDs of the computer system and the operating system that it's referring to. When I press connect to discover schema, I see I get a source and a target. Those two attributes need to be mapped. 
and source needs to point to the operating system. So that will be just as I created above. It will be machine plus underscore OS, whereas the target is the computer system, and that will just be machine. And now I'm ready to test this. So I've now created uh, 19 different uh, operating systems, computer systems, and relationships in my IDML file. And if we bring up the File Explorer, we can go to the IDML folder and see that it's generated a now a new file with a unique name. And this is going to be the import file that we can then use for TATAM or TBSM or any system which imports IDML. Now, although it looks good, this still needs to be verified. So we have a validation option in TDI. I'm going to turn that on now. For my open IDML component, in the connection tab at the very bottom, we have an advanced section. And here I've got a validation checkbox. So by enabling validate or validation, when I run the assembly line again, it's going to create a new IDML file. But once it's completely written and it closes, it is then going to do a validation for it. And we'll see that appear down here in the console view. So here is the validation report. This is the same report I would get on the command line if I ran my TDI assembly line from a command line. And note that if you don't see it here, you actually have a couple of console displays. You've got one which is showing us the information coming from the server itself, and the other one which is coming from our assembly line. And that's how easy it is to create a DLA using TDI 7.1.